This is Philadelphia Eagles Now. I am your host, Chase Senior. As always, thanks for your support of the show. Coming up on the program today, a former NFL general manager listed reasons to be concerned about the Eagles heading into 2023. Before we look at those concerns, though, make sure you subscribe to the show. Keep an eye on what's coming up here. Eagles training camp begins later this month, July 25th. Right after that is the preseason. We'll be doing watch parties for that. And then the regular season comes. And we'll be doing watch parties for the regular season games as well. And the return of some of our crazy live shows will certainly get underway with content coming your way every single day. We're on the road to 50,000 subscribers as the largest independently run Eagles channel on YouTube. So hit that sub button right now. As for what we're talking about on the program today, reasons to be concerned about the Eagles heading into 2023, a year after they made it to the Super Bowl and suffered that heartbreaking loss to Kansas City. Now, Randy Mueller, former general manager in the NFL, listed some of these concerns, and we're going to break them down and dissect them by quote. Howie Roseman, the best general manager in the league right now, he began with saying, and I am surely not going to sit in my chair and say I have a ton of worries about this team. I know head coach Nick Sirianni and what makes him tick, they overlapped a few years ago. We had some deep conversations when we were both with the Chargers. He will find a way to keep the narrative fresh and the team will be hungry to finish the job after coming up just short last year. And coming off a Super Bowl loss is really difficult to do. The two Super Bowls that the Eagles have made it to in my lifetime, lost in Super Bowl 39 to the New England Patriots that following year. It was kind of a disaster, especially with the whole Terrell Owens situation. And then when they won Super Bowl 52, you can remember that the following year, they had to be unconscious that last month of the season in the regular season in order to make it into the playoffs as Nick Foles rallied the guys. So you can't afford to start this season slow especially given the construct of this schedule this year for Philadelphia. You have some winnable games in the first five, six weeks. Then that middle portion of the schedule, as we've documented here, does get very difficult. And you don't want to have to be in a situation in which you're trying to play catch-up in the middle to latter portions of the campaign. So will the Eagles be better or worse than they were in 2022? Here in 2023. This will be our pinned comment for today's show. So make sure you get your responses in. B for better or W for worse. And great job by Trace to cue this up because here is that Eagles 2023 schedule. Winnable game on the road against the Patriots, even though fittingly they're going to honor the quarterback who the Eagles beat back in 2017 in Tom Brady. It's going to be raucous in Foxborough at Gillette Stadium, but you're the better team than New England. I understand that weird, wonky, wacky things happen in week one. For instance, the Eagles nearly lost to the Lions in week one last year. Got to win that game. Kirk Cousins is a fraud. Have to beat Minnesota in week two on Thursday night football. Then you go on the road. Going to be a little bit hot, which is sometimes a concern, but at this point in the Northeast, it's extremely humid, right? So I think the Eagles are going to be acclimated with some of that hot weather against the Tampa Bay Buccaneers on Monday Night Football. Baker Mayfield or Kyle Trask might be their starter. And then you get Sam Howe, week four. So I think the Eagles, barring any catastrophic injuries here, should be able to start off 4-0 and this upcoming season. This is when it starts to get a little bit difficult. The Eagles are a better team than the Rams, but cross-country trips are never easy and sometimes daunting. Week 6, you go up I-95 North to take on Aaron Rodgers and the Jets. You have the high-powered Dolphins attack coming to Lincoln Financial Field in Week 7, and then Week 8 on the road against the Commanders. So here, I'd say three of these four games are difficult. The one gimme, though, is the second go-around against Washington, divisional foe, sometimes We've seen that these divisional games don't go as according to plan because they're difficult matchups because of the familiarity between the two teams. Week 9 against the Cowboys, let's be real. I hate the Cowboys. Type F Dallas if you're with me, but they have owned Philadelphia since Dak Prescott came into the league. Bye week comes at a fitting time. Week 10. Week 11 on the road against the Chiefs. Monday Night Football, Super Bowl rematch. Week 12, Josh Allen and the Bills come to town. Week 13. San Francisco comes back to South Philadelphia, rematch of the NFC Championship game. Is there a harder stretch of the schedule, and we can also look at that Cowboys game, Trace, than Chiefs, Bills, Niners, Cowboys in four consecutive weeks? 
goes to show you the importance of starting off well this season. Then at the Seahawks is a difficult game because the Eagles always struggle in Seattle. Smitty knows. Week 16 against the Giants on Christmas. Week 17 against the Cardinals. Then week 18 against the Giants. And the Eagles did pull off the trifecta sweep against New York last year. But that's two times in three weeks that you're taking on the G-Men who figure to be vying for a spot in the NFL playoffs. More from former general manager Randy Mueller on some concerns for the Eagles. Losing both coordinators is a byproduct of the success the Eagles had in 2022 that does force others into roles that might take some adjusting that may lead to a less than ideal start as new people design and then call games for the first time. So here, I do believe that that's a viable concern. Pressure is going to be on Sean Desai, who has one year of defensive coordinator experience, that one year with Chicago. He did farewell. He's a Vic Fangio disciple. The fingerprints from Vic Fangio defenses are spread across all 32 teams at the NFL level. And Brian Johnson, I like him as an offensive mind, but he's going to be calling plays for the first time. He does have familiarity with Jalen Hurts, as Jalen Hurts' dad coached Brian Johnson when he was in high school. And Brian Johnson has done some really good work at the college level with Dak Prescott, with Kyle Trask, and with Jalen Hurts. He's overseen some of that development over the last couple of years. But new and inexperienced coordinators here for Philadelphia are going to be thrust into some big roles. As for the Eagles' offensive line, the Eagles' offensive line is getting a little bit older. Jordan Mailata, Landon Dickerson, still young. Jason Kelsey, certainly older. And then you have Lane Johnson at right tackle, who certainly is seasoned, and who's going to start at right guard. I think it's going to be Cam Jurgens. But the Eagles' offensive line, which was the best in the NFL last year, can they duplicate that success getting older and losing Isaac Sayamalo? More on this to come, but first... How about this deal? Thanks to our friends at Fanatics. This Eagles Fresh Retro Polo was $70. It is now on sale for just $35. But that deal only applies if you use that link down below, chatsports.com slash Eagles Polo, and make sure you use that link so that Fanatics knows that Chat Sports and Eagles now sent you. Here's more from Randy Mueller here as we continue to comb through his evaluation of this football team. The only thing on offense that is of some concern is the number of sacks, 44, 11th most in the league the Eagles took last year. Quarterback Jalen Hurts still developing when it comes to processing and reading coverage. The simplistic passing game approach may have a short shelf life versus really good NFL defensive coordinators. The more they see it, so the Eagles must keep expanding the medium to downfield portion of this pass scheme. And I think that is the next progression for Jalen Hurts here. He has to be able to show and display that he can make throws all across the football field, that he can dissect what defenses are going to throw to him and adjust to that. And the Eagles giving up the 11th most sacks, you're like, well, what, Chase? You just said that the Eagles had the best offensive line in football. A lot of that is because Hurts is a mobile quarterback. He's trying to extend plays, and you can only hold up in your pass protection for so long. And for Hurts last year, this is a big reason why he finished runner-up in NFL MVP voting. And I think what's so impressive is that he threw the ball 460 times, and then he ran the ball 165 times, yet he only turned it over six interceptions and two fumbles lost. That's crazy with how often he had his hands on the football. He completed nearly 67% of his passes, 3,700 yards. Touchdown interception ratio through the air of 22 to 6. 13 more tutties on the ground. And I just want to see continued growth, continued development here from Jalen Hurts. And I think he's going to be able to do that because of the weapons that are around him. I still like the Eagles offensive line. Jason Kelsey continues to age at a very good rate, but the weapons are also very good. You have A.J. Brown, Devontae Smith, respectively, who had record-breaking seasons last year. Can Quez Watkins be that home run threat? And then Dallas Goddard is one of the best tight ends in the NFL. Yards per target leaders the last two years, Dallas Goddard actually leads all players in the NFL, surprisingly. A lot of you don't realize that because he's used so often as a guy who needs to block, but he's a very good pass catcher. I think behind George Kill, 
second best all-around tight end in the NFL. And for him to be in this category here, yards per target leaders with Kendrick Bourne, Tyler Lockett, Justin Jefferson, T. Higgins, that's elite category right there. More from Mueller, adjusting new people to their roles and making sure none get full of themselves should probably be the primary concern for this group. That's about as good as it gets in a league where most teams operate with their hair on fire at all times. I also want to add this and bring this to the forefront too. The Eagles had some pretty good injury history last year. Can they duplicate and replicate that injury history and Eagles injury luck? Because if you do get some injury misfortune, that is something that can curtail and really ruin some of the plans that you had. And it's very difficult to go back to back in making deep runs in the NFL playoffs. And the Eagles are going to look to embark on that. And really, can they become the first team since 2004 to be a repeat winner in the NFC East? It's been a weird and wild division for a really long time. I think Philadelphia, by far and away, better than Dallas. But they do need some of that injury luck on their side. So how many games will the Eagles win in 2023? As always, share your thoughts with us. Bird Gang, what up? We appreciate you.